How's it going you guys? So in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about vitamin C supplementation and why it might potentially have some benefits outside of the typical prevention of vitamin deficiencies. So let me preface this video with stating the fact that um, I personally believe pretty strongly now that Vitamin deficiencies are mostly a byproduct or a result of diets based on refined foods. And I would go as far as saying that refined foods themselves actually require far more vitamins in order to process their macronutrients that are not packaged with their natural vitamin and mineral content. Um, and so what I'm saying here is essentially when you eat a, like refined white rice, for example, um, your B1 requirement goes way up and generally brown rice contains B1 in it naturally. And because you're eating that white rice without the B1 attached to it, uh, you can develop a deficiency, but that deficiency is not necessarily that you need B1 every single day in order to survive, but more so you need that B1 in order to process that carbohydrate. And so all nutrient deficiencies should be looked at within the context of the overall diet. Now, vitamin C is one of those uh, interesting uh, vitamins because uh, traditionally, you know, so sailors that acquired scurvy, um, they were success successfully treated not only with lemons and limes, but also there are cases um, in, in the Arctic of Europe, I believe, where they were successfully treated for scurvy using reindeer meat, fresh reindeer meat, and they did not develop uh, and, they, and they cure scurvy with fresh reindeer meat rather than some kind of plant food with vitamin C. So there must be some anti-ascorbic factors in fresh animal meat. So anyway, um, with that being said, potential benefits for vitamin C would include, uh, so the number one thing that I think vitamin C can be very good for is chronic fatigue syndrome, feelings of fatigue and depression and feelings of unfocus and also potentially for insomnia and chronic stress. Uh, so I personally have experimented with vitamin C supplements and I've noticed that it does actually relieve a significant amount of fatigue that I had originally thought was from, you know, my hard two, two or three session training sessions a day that I do most of the week because I'm a uh, I'm basically a mixed martial arts um, competitor. Uh, I was training Muay Thai and kickboxing for a number of years, and now I'm doing Jiu Jitsu on a regular basis, training you know twice a day, a lot of days, five days a week. And so uh, I thought that the fatigue was a result of you know all the training stressing my body, and it may very well have been. What I noted, and I think that it could have been, but when I started supplementing with vitamin C, uh, it relieved the fatigue, at least to some extent, that I was experiencing from my training. Um, and it seemed to also decrease my soreness. Now, here's the thing I want to get out there is that vitamin C acts as a precursor uh, vitamin. It actually works in synergy as a building block alongside amino acids like phenylalanine and tyrosine to build uh, neuroepinephrine. And I made a video about the dopamine cascade before where I showed a, a chart of how vitamins and minerals and amino acids um, combine together in a step-by-step -step process and lead to different neurotransmitter reactions. Vitamin C is um, needed for converting tyrosine into neuroepinephrine and dopamine and L-dopa and that whole cascade. The whole cascade that's responsible for feeling motivated, feeling energized, feeling focused. Whereas um, 
the other potential conversion that can take place in the absence of vitamin C, uh, especially in the presence of emotional stimulus to stress, when you perceive something as a threat, that can change the neurotransmitter cascade in the direction that it goes to where um, phenylalanine and tyrosine convert into cortisol instead of a neuroadrenaline and adrenaline and dopamine. And so a lot of people don't, like they know that cortisol is bad and that it can rob your energy and focus, but they don't know the mechanism. And this is partially the mechanism involved is that uh, vitamin C can encourage, let's say, the conversion of the building blocks into dopamine and neuroadrenaline slash norepinephrine rather than converting it into cortisol. So, so vitamin C prevents tyrosine from being converted into stress hormones and instead it is converted into neurotransmitters required for energy, focus, and um, feeling good, feeling motivated. So that is why number one, it can help with sleep because a lot of people's insomnia is caused by monkey mind thoughts because during the day they have inadequate levels of neuroadrenaline or neuroepinephrine and um, dopamine as well as an overproduction of cortisol. Now that is not entirely um, the whole story, but it is for the most part um, in regards to vitamin C supplementation. And remember all of this is theoretical. Uh, nutrition science in no way, shape, or form is meant to prove absolute facts. Um, if you read the book Vitamania, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about here. But vitamin C can potentially relieve anxiety and fatigue through this mechanism. So a lot of people, especially on carnivore diets, so when you go carnivore or even keto at first, Keto, it might be even better because you're still eating some vitamin C rich plants. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that you have to eat plant foods or take supplements to get vitamin C or that you even need vitamin C, but hear me out. A lot of people, when they go carnivore, they experience like this pure state of energy and bliss at first. Now there are a lot of people that do not. Obviously also get to stay on top of your electrolytes and eat adequate protein and then go through the withdrawal symptoms of carbohydrates and the adaptation period for about two to four weeks. But most people experience like relief of all of their negative symptoms within two weeks or so when they go carnivore. But a lot of them don't. And after a certain period of time, three, three maybe eight months sometimes, uh, some people, not everyone and not even a lot of people, but there are a lot, there are actually numerous cases of people that start to report feeling bad. They sort of feel tired and they're wondering what's going on, why they're all of a sudden running into problems. And I think a, one explanation for this is that, uh, for whatever reason, they might not have been doing something correctly like supplementing enough sodium because a lot of there's a stigma against sodium now in the low carb community and it's dangerous in fact i got muted from a group recently for insisting that someone take some salt to relieve their migraines um but the other explanation is that when you first go carnivore you're decreasing the demand for vitamin c and also decreasing the demand for vitamin B1, okay? And vitamin C and vitamin B1, if you are deficient in those nutrients, if your body is, is, is using more than it can refill, then you experience symptoms of fatigue, depression, and lethargy. Those are the first symptoms of vitamin B1 and vitamin C deficiency. Um, and also things like bleeding gums, and even that might also explain why so many people on even like keto diets, but especially carnivore, experience more buildup of tartar and calculus on their teeth. Now, you know, because vitamin C supposedly binds with calcium, which people claim is simply toxic because of calcium oxalate stones and whatnot and kidney stones. But um, 
there is a greater buildup of calculus and tartar that I've discussed in the past on my YouTube channel, which no one's really been able to give an, a sensible explanation for why it happens re uh, yet. And so I think it might possibly have something to do with a vitamin C deficiency. Um, I don't think it's caused by ketones in the blood because it even happens to people long term. Anyway, or ketones in the saliva. So, so vitamin C deficiency could be to explain for why, like at first, like their body is not needing as much vitamin C and B1, so that relieves some of the burden on on the system. But then over time, after months go by, these people might eventually uh, use up the majority of their stores of vitamin C and need to replenish. And obviously, um, this could possibly be completely negated if people include organs in their diet, uh, and especially raw milk, because uh, there's actually scurvy. Um, one of the original occurrences of scurvy was when uh, Europeans started pasteurizing their dairy products because milk actually contains natural vitamin C in it and they were experiencing symptoms of scurvy when they uh, pasteurized milk because it kills the vitamin C because vitamin C is extremely heat sensitive. Um, so raw milk does contain quite a lot of vitamin C. I don't remember exactly, but I think it was like 70 milligrams per liter of milk, but I might be wrong. So if you're a carnivore, you're eating a carnivore diet, you should probably uh, aim to get some form of vitamin C in your diet just as a preventative measure. I don't see any point in like being angry at me discussing vitamin C, but you know, suggesting that maybe you should try to fulfill that need somehow. But people get real dogmatic and angry in these health communities. And like I've been, I'm wearing a shirt right now that says um, lift weights and eat steaks, meat hills, you know? <laughs> but I'm not, one of those closed-minded carnivore diet people who like freak out at you for suggesting something that goes against their dogma. Um, and I think it's perfectly sound logic, which is important. But anyway, uh, yeah, so as a therapeutic agent for things like fatigue and, and lethargy, vitamin C might be beneficial. Um, and another potential mechanism as to how it can relieve fatigue would be things like um, Neutralizing free radical, free radicals, and a lot of people don't realize that a huge source of influ or a huge source of fatigue is actually a buildup of free radicals and um, a burden on the immune system. Now, mind you, this is a far stretch, and again, it's theoretical. And considering the fact that I never get sick ever, I have not even had a sniffle since like 2018 when I first went carnivore really, and I'm not even carnivore these days, I eat fruit and honey. Um, so I don't even know if it would be a burden on my immune system, but I do train a lot and my body's under a lot of physical stress, so that might explain something. Uh, now as far as vitamin C and its um, beneficial, supposed beneficial properties on um, you know, colds and flu, uh, the science is very mixed. But from a mechanistic standpoint, and also when you observe the quality of the trials, as well as um, the cohort studies involved, it seems like there is a beneficial effect on decreasing the length of time and the severity of um, respiratory illness and things like cold and flu by consuming an adequate, actually a, an abundant supply of vitamin C. So if you look at studies that take one to 10 grams a day, which is a lot, um, and, and multiple doses throughout the day, obviously spread throughout the day, you'll see that there seems to be a benefit at the higher doses. But if you're you know, dosing under 500 milligrams, the benefit's not as substantial. And another thing is um, some of the studies show if you measure vitamin C at baseline, basically people who um, start off with deficient vitamin C and they supplement even with 200 milligrams of vitamin C a day that they experience a um, boost in immunity 
and a relief of fatigue and they feel much better after uh, two weeks of, actually after four days in some cases, of consuming 200 milligrams of supplemental vitamin C a day. So that's, that evidence suggests that, especially in people who are under consuming vitamin C, probably because of refined foods for, uh, increasing the demand for it, that these people uh, relieve symptoms associated with vitamin C deficiency. So if you're, if you're not consuming a lot of vitamin C, it might, it might be worth a try to just supplement with one, maybe three grams throughout the spread throughout the day or to bowel tolerance, watching out for diarrhea and things, um, just to see if it provides you some kind of benefit. Um, for me, it seems like for a couple days, I get uh, a relief in fatigue and a boost in mood, but after about three, maybe four days, uh, it seems like I'm just pissing the vitamin C out and I feel I feel like there's an excess of vitamin C in my blood that's not being absorbed. Um, so maybe a short term trial, I don't know. Uh, but I don't think vitamin C is nearly as uh, beneficial as some of the medicinal mushrooms that I've been taking, like cordyceps, lion's mane, and reishi. And I think combining uh, cordyceps and reishi from a reputable supplier that actually produces high quality extracts in the fruiting body, I found to produce probably the most amazing energy boosting, health boosting, vitality boosting um, effect out of any supplement or any food I've ever tried. But vitamin C is worth a try. Um, hope you found this informative. Leave your questions, comments, and experiences down below and I'll talk to you all next time.